Hello again, Des Asante here from the Tech Muse Academy with another MixLessons.com video quick tip. Um, this uh, Today I want to get into a little feature that has been added into, a couple of features actually, that have been added into Cubase, which is my DAW of choice, that you may be able to find similar equivalents to in the DAW that you use, uh, specifically concerning drum editing, which used to be the bane of my existence as an audio guy. Uh, drum edits were always tedious. There's multiple tracks in, in a drum file, typically. You've got your overheads and your kick and your snare and your toms and so on and so forth, and that can make it very difficult to do quantization type edits, so timing edits. Um, so what happened is a couple of versions ago, uh, Cubase, the Steinberg team began to incorporate uh, two things really. One of them was group channel editing. So this is essentially the ability for the DAW to treat a mul multiple channels, multiple tracks, for example, a drum mix as one track as one group essentially and edited as such maintaining phase coherency and so on and so forth it's very very cool the other thing that they've uh, that they've managed to implement is audio warping technology and, then, and again most major DAWs have these types of features but if you combine the two together it makes drum editing extremely simple when it comes to quantizing live drums to get them a little tighter to the grid so let me show you what I mean I've got a session here uh, by a friend of mine named Stacy Bannon. The tune is called Out of My Head. It's a great little number. And uh, I'm just going to use this as an uh, opportunity to illustrate this concept in the, in the drums. I'll give you a couple of bars here. Going out today, yeah, trying to keep so busy. I'm about to shine and let you know, so please be out of my head. I want to tell you so. Okay, so she's got sort of a pop country thing going on. She's very good uh, in the process, I think, of working on a record right now. So just Google up Stacy Bannon, B-A-N-N-O-N, -N -N, if, if you like that sort of sound. Uh, so let's have a look at these drums. I'm just going to solo them for a second. Okay. Now this, these drums were played by a pro session guy, and they're pretty, uh, they're pretty on the grid. Um, I'm going to actually make it so that I can hear my click track for a second here. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got going on here. So uh, first, the first thing is, is that the way this, this group editing works in Cubase is if you put a bunch of tracks into a folder track, and you can see I can collapse this folder, that's purely for organizational purposes. That's got nothing to do with signal routing. It's not like a bus or an aux or a group channel. Uh, it's just a folder so that I can fold it up and get the tracks out of the way visually. Um, but one of the advantages of using a folder track is that this button right here allows me to place that folder in group editing mode. So essentially Cubase will treat all of the tracks within that folder as if they were one track, okay? Before I do that though, what I'm gonna do is, what I, I'm gonna zoom in a little here so we can see a little clearer what's going on. And we're gonna quantize some of these drums. So I'm just gonna make a selection here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop a piece out. We'll chop that out and we'll, we'll say we'll do, I don't know, four bars. And we'll chop that there, okay? So now you can see that uh, uh, I've, I've made a section here from bar 39 to bar 43, and we're just gonna deal with that section only. When you do make a segment like that, you're able to quantize that segment individually so that you can do, perhaps for example, if you run into, uh, for the most part, everything is on the 16th note, so you quantize to the 16th note, but there's that one fill that was a triplet, and now that triplet got pushed to the closest 16th. So you may wanna chop that part out individually and quantize that all by itself to a triplet value as opposed to a 16th note value. So for those of you who, don't, who aren't familiar, quantize simply means push the notes to the closest beat or subdivision of that beat um, to correct the timing issues, okay? So if we listen to this drum track here again, I'm just going to put a loop point here. Going out today. Okay, now that is pretty tight, but if I do zoom in, you can see some of these notes just a little off the beat there. The, the line is the is the beat line there. And just a little bit later, a little bit earlier, whatnot. That's just because a human played this this track. Now, uh, 
to be honest, this track doesn't need to be quantized, but I'm going to use it as an example anyway. Now, the way this works is it works on a priority scheme. So you, you might want, because there's multiple tracks, you may want to tell the DAW to, to quantize with priority on, for example, the kick drum. So if there was a kick drum note and a snare drum note at almost the exact same time, which one is it going to treat as the anchor point? So first we need to set up those, th those priorities. And the way it's done is like this. If I take my, uh, let's say, let's say my snare track here, and I'm just going to solo that. I'm going to get rid of these guys here real quick. Okay, I'm going to double click and open that up in the sample editor, and I'm going to go to my hit points algorithm. Now, it's another thing that was greatly improved in this version of, uh, of Cubase is the hit point detection algorithm. So it basically works with a threshold slider like this. I'm going to hit edit hit points. It's going to do a little analysis for me right there. You'll notice, though, that it's got some of this stuff in the middle. And if we listen to that, some of those, those are kick drum bleed notes that it's putting hit points on. We don't want that. So we're going to raise the threshold up so we get rid of those. And now you can see there are fewer hit points. We're ignoring these lower level sounds and we're just capturing the transients of the snare. And that looks pretty good. We've got a nice a nice hit point on every actual snare shot. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to close that window now. I'm going to go I'm going to go and do the same thing with my kick drum. I realized that track was frozen, which is why it wasn't cooperating like the rest of them were. So I'm going to open up that kick drum track. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to go to my hit points, edit hit points. It's going to throw hit points in for me. Again, it looks like it's catching a few too many. So I'm going to edit that threshold. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with, for example, uh, hi-hat. Edit hit points. Adjust the threshold. Okay, so that'll do. There's a couple extra in there, but for the sake of this demonstration, it'll do just fine. So all I did was establish hit points uh, on those sort of key tracks, tracks that really determine the tempo and the pulse in the pocket, okay? From there, I'm going to activate group edit mode. That, again, that means Cubase is going to treat all of these tracks as though they were one, okay? You'll notice when I select one, it selects them all now, okay? The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my quantize menu. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see a little more clearly what's going on here. Out just a little bit. There. So what I'm going to do now here is, is I'm going to decide on my priority. So I'm going to say I want the kick drum to be top priority um, because that downbeat's really got to be strong and solid and on the beat. And my snare drum will be my secondary priority. My hi-hat will give me everything in between. Okay. I'm going to also quantize this to the 16th note. Mm, yeah, let's try that first. And I'm going to use audio warp quantize. Okay. This is the, the, um, the feature that allows the, so the software to stretch the audio into time as opposed to chopping and moving, which potentially leaves gaps and things that need to be crossfaded and so on and so forth. This is a much smoother uh, version of Quantize. So I'm going to hit the Quantize button right here and just watch over here uh, to, the, to the notes themselves and see how they move. All right, you saw how that worked. Now if I undo it, you'll see them move back. So let me quantize that again, and let's have a listen. And if I undo it again, 
there it is. So you can hear that this drummer was actually quite tight, quite in the pocket, um, earned his money that day. And uh, But this is just an example as to how you might be able to fix some slight timing errors on a multi-channel drum track. So again, we pick our priority tracks, our kick, our snare, maybe our hi-hat or ride cymbal, we find the hit points, determine the hit points, we then prioritize them in the quantize panel, we add, we activate group channel edit mode, we use the audio warp version of quantize, and we hit the quantize button to move the notes to the value, to the closest value that we've determined here. So once again, that is a fantastic time saver. I was super excited when I first learned how all this worked and uh, hopefully it helps you too. If you're not a Cubase user, hopefully you can find some similar functionality in the DAW that you use and, uh, and that you can enjoy a little bit of a you know, less hair pulling experience when you're editing your drums. So I hope you find that helpful and we'll see you on the next quick tip.